Hello, 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 Crossroads Witches and other interesting magical beings. Woo! This is an update on a video that I had shot last month when I was doing research and I found out that there was these cursed trees in the area and it really intrigued me. And I also reached out and asked several of you what you're cursed, if you had any cursed sites, cursed trees. And I went down the rabbit hole and I wanna give this update. And I'm still trying to figure out the words on how to say this out loud and make sure that I show absolute respect to the entirety of it. As I start talking, you'll understand what I'm talking about. Uh, cursed trees. We have several here in the Low Country, the Charleston area. There is one that is over on the Coming Tree Plantation. And there's this great urban myth that it's cursed because uh, it was an Indian chief uh, was buried there and it's cursed. And that just didn't make sense to me. All right. I, I just couldn't add it all up on why would an Indian chief and we did not even the tribe be buried over on this plantation. And this is an older plantation. So it's been there for hundreds of years. And how would they even know that uh, Indian burial grounds in this area? They didn't actually bury them. They were cremated. So again, I had all these questions and I ended up down the rabbit hole with the American Folklore Journal. It is an academic peer reviewed where I found a 1962 reference talking about this, this tree on the plantation and it referenced back to an 1894 entry and I found the entry. And I'm happy I found the entry. I'm happy I went down this rabbit hole, but at the same time, it really stepped me back hard. Uh, this tree, uh, as told by a woman in which has direct memory of it, the cursing tree is actually a lynching tree that was near the slave quarters of the plantation. It was a hanging tree. Yeah, which was very common in the 1700s through the 1800s, all the, well, it's common all the way up through some terrible time periods into the 1900s with lynchings. And somewhere in the course of this tree's history, this urban myth came about. And I guess it was easier to tell the urban myth than it was to tell the real story. Uh, I also have, uh, there's two trees that have been identified on the plantation. They don't know the actual tree. Um, based on my research, I would tell you it was the tree that was closest to the slave quarters themselves because uh, this 1894 entry is, is a woman in which uh, is descendant from the plantation. She was a, a young child when she has memory of three bodies hanging in the tree. So I would use hers more so than I would use the other uh, research that I found because she's a true eyewitness to this. So this sent me down some other rabbit holes of, oh my gosh, how many are there here? And in the process, I found out that there are several of these trees here in my area and which nobody talks about. We have completely uh, erased the history or we have completely whitewashed the history. Uh, in downtown Charleston is another lynching tree and which is where uh, the civil rights movement, 1964, the march started at that tree and went to the courthouse. Uh, the trees at the corner of a park. I did go see the tree. I opted not to take pictures of it. Um, just didn't feel right is what I'm going to go. I, I sat down at the base of the tree. I definitely cried some tears. I brought my Bible and read out loud a couple of verses and 
walked around the tree talking about that, you know, we're trying to do better and that you're not forgotten. Excuse the bravado in my voice. Uh, I think I spent the afternoon after I visited the tree crying over it uh, and crying over the fact there is no memorial plate, there's no identifier, there's nothing there. It's just that unless you know this tree was where the Civil Rights March started here in Charleston, if you, you know, go back into articles, you can find it out quite easy. But in the park itself, there's no memorial, there's no marking, there's no nothing on it. And I found that that was the truth for almost all of the trees um, here. What we're calling cursed trees are vestiges of a horrific time period where innocent people were hung from trees. And so now that I found that out with the coming tree plantation and that original cursed tree, I've made the decision that I don't want to go out there after I visited the tree in downtown Charleston. And I just, it didn't feel like there was anything I needed to do there. Uh, there wasn't anything that was calling to me. But what it really made me realize was that a lot of our urban myths are hiding darker truths and not to take things at face value. Do your research and double check your research and go down further past it. Look in the bibliographies, you know, uh, get up on the internet, Google it three or four times and see what else other people are, are saying or doing in regards to some of these uh, sites, you know, and it just really stepped me back all the way around with my research and that we need to be able to tell these stories. Uh, we can't forget our history because then it gets repeated. Do y'all know what I'm saying? So this is my cursed tree update that is just a terrible, terrible thing. And I'm so happy I found out. I'm so grateful I got to go to downtown Charleston. Like I said, I, I did go to that tree and, and stood there um, just letting them know that we haven't forgotten and that all of us, how important it is for us to look around our own local areas and learn the real history. Now, I do have another little up on that where in the middle of all my research, I found out that there's a crossroads right down here that supposedly several people have made deals with the devil. And so I'm doing some research on that and I will keep you updated with it as far as what I find out. Uh, I'm going to just be like, oh my, oh my, is all I have to say when looking for cursed sites. Why is it cursed? What does it mean? And getting past the urban myths. I'm still sort of, I don't know, just a little aha in my brain over all of it. But I'm grateful for the journey I took. All right, witches, get out there, fly those brooms, and as always, amen, bless be, ashe, and a bobo.